A Senate panel describes Y2K, the year 2000 computer bug, as a worldwide crisis and one of the most serious and potentially devastating events this nation has ever encountered. And it points to the healthcare industry as worst prepared. The Washington Post says the full report will be released later this week. Night Beats Anthony Moore reports that even before the year 2000 rolls around, panic itself could cause problems. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt was speaking more than 60 years ago. But in the minds of America's bankers, he could have been talking about today. We started planning in 1996. We went Steve back Barlow is chief operating officer at Richmond-based Mechanics Bank. 170-page project plan, that written test plans. And that's what Spurred by federal regulations and good business bankers. sense, banks have so been working on the Y2K bug for years. That... They're operating the Unisys NX 4801 mainframe, year 2000 testing. In fact, the Mechanics Bank computers have lived through the millennium right already. Now. I've already bumped this system up well over the year 2000 into the year 2001. But officials here are worried that their best efforts at fixing software could run afoul of Y2K panic. Pre-millennial bank runs by people who fear ATMs won't work or their money will be lost. And bank after bank across the country is hit by panic withdrawals. Just like the bank runs that troubled FDR. How serious do you take that threat? I think it's serious unless it's counterbalanced by the kind of discussion we're having. People who are in the know that have been through the, the planning and the testing and the test results and the contingency planning. I mean, the fear is that consumers really don't understand clearly what we've done. The federal government is already printing an additional $50 billion to cover banks in anticipation people will withdraw extra cash before the new year and they're conducting a public awareness campaign out of concern panic could take hold. We're certainly telling banks that they need to be prepared, that as we approach the year 2000, anxieties will increase and they need to be prepared for it. Y2K anxieties are already in evidence at Earthquake Preparedness Associates. The store nearly went bust when quakes were the only concern. But now they're shipping water barrels, crank radios, and other survival items all over the Bay Area. So what has Y2K done for your business? Well, it's probably doubled our business at this point in time. And no matter where you look, supplies of dehydrated food is, are drying up. We sold out. Certain suppliers that we're trying to work with are five, six months out with certain types of fuel for portable cooking stoves. And the potential that people will overreact to Y2K is beginning to concern emergency officials. I don't think that we're going to see major problems with Y2K. There's more of a concern that people will um, react inappropriately as the year goes on. They say their duty is to counterbalance the shrill voices. We've been doing this for 50 years, preparing for emergencies. We know what we're doing, we have contingency plans, we have education. Well, we need to, to be able to separate the uh, uh, moralistic religious fervor involved with the millennium change from what's happening on this technological stage. Still, even reasonable people can become concerned. In its new brochure, none other than the Red Cross advises people have enough supplies on hand for a week of disruptions. And the power company, and even the bankers, won't guarantee anything. We can't make any warranties. You know, we can't make any absolute statements that everything will work. In Richmond, Anthony Moore, New Center 4, on the night. And tomorrow, are the people who urge we prepare for Y2K helping, or could they be inadvertently fomenting fear? Anthony, we'll look at that. That's the last thing we need. Well, we've heard this before, these three little letters and numbers, Y2K. It's shorthand for the computer bug that some say will wreak havoc around the globe midnight, New Year's Eve. But increasingly, some are concerned about the panic problem before New Year's Eve. And New Center 4's Anthony Moore has a report tonight that experts say if too many people heed dire warnings, Y2K could become a self-fulfilling prophecy even before the New Year's hits.
For Orlean Kale of Rincon Valley, today's a Y2K practice day. She's doing without electricity, heat, running water, and fresh food. This is really delicious. This is called taco and meat. To make sure her family is prepared. She's even stocked her garage with wheat from her father's farm. You should have about 250 pounds of wheat for a year. And bought appliances that work without power. And it will grind just about everything. Kale is a devout Mormon. She firmly believes Y2K could fulfill apocalyptic prophecy in the Bible's book of Revelations, which she thinks wouldn't be so bad if it crashes the computer. It's almost become an idol, like the 10 hours that my son <laughs> stand, it stays in front of the computer. So it's maybe only just that this idol comes crashing down. Millennial scholar Stephen O'Leary is not surprised. January 1, 2000, the day the earth will stand still. He studies millennial fever. The USC professor says prophecies of doom attract people who feel alienated from our technological civilization. What it promises is a reversal, uh, an overturning of the worldly order. But O'Leary is concerned that Y2K fears could also break out among the population at large. I think there are uh, real risks of... Uh, you know, panic behavior which could have a uh, profound impact on our society. Why? Because Y2K is the first end of the world prophecy in history where something will definitely happen on the predicted date. And you don't have to have religion to believe. Y2K has re replaced nuclear panic. Duck and cover. What they both have in common is an objective, scientific, technical uh, referent for an ancient prophecy. So if the religious and non-religious alike buy in, calls to prepare could sow the seeds of panic. Preparation measures and uh, people's panic response uh, can actually multiply, uh, you know, what would, what, what would otherwise be a rather innocent and uh, probably pretty, you know, uh, minor technical problem. Bob Boucher oversees a church-based Y2K center in Sonoma County. He says Y2K preparations are already bringing the churched and unchurched together. God's doing something in our county. It is kind of neat when you think about it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. PG and E Company cannot make a year 2000 compliance representation or guarantee. At Crossroads Community Church in Castro Valley, Traditional Values Coalition leader Mark Zapolik makes it his business to urge people to prepare. My personal family plan is to be equipped to be self-sufficient for at least six months. Zapolik believes there will be panic before the new year. In anticipation of runs on the bank. But he contends he's part of the solution, not panic. If the general population doesn't get the hard evidence and true story on this until October, November, December, then it's going to be too late. Hi, I'm Ken Klein, author of Prophecy Books and Videos. But Zapolik's millennial message contains more than a hint that technical chaos might make things better. He has no love for a society which has strayed too far, banning school prayer, legalizing abortion, and promoting homosexual rights. This may yet be the salvation of America, that we would have a big shakeup. For now, Y2K's true believers are few. Kale's written a book to convince others. But so far, she says, her neighbors won't listen. Even her husband is skeptical. He skipped this Y2K practice dinner. Zapolik worries some discount Y2K warnings when religious people are sounding the call. If the lights don't go on, that's not a theological issue. It's, it's a technical issue. Either way, Professor O'Leary believes it's only a matter of time before more people jump on board. I think we've entered what I call the hot zone of apocalyptic time. Anthony Moore, New Center 4, on the night beat. Religious and secular experts Anthony talked to agree if people don't panic, preparation efforts could bring neighbors and communities closer together. Analysts suggest we'll begin to see which way we're headed, say, after Labor